live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri. He is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable KSM. The KSM Show. <laughs> it's always great to to come back on the show and host people who have been watching me since they were toddlers, man. <laughs> and my guest today, my guest today, a very, very, very fantastic woman. She used to be in the media space. She's now moved from the media space because she's now working as a spokesperson for the NDC manifesto when it comes to gender children and social protection and today we're going to hear all about it plus many other things put your hands together show some love for my good daughter shamima mosley <laughs> Welcome to the show. Good to see you, man. Thank you very Have much. Have a seat right thank there. You, thank you, thank you. Okay, folks. <laughs> Shamima is in the house, man. We're going to talk plenty about things that will excite you. So stick around. We're taking commercial break. When we come back, Shamima is in the house. We'll be right back. KSM Show. Is it the luxurious rooms? Or the serene green surroundings? Is it the tempting swimming pool? Or the classy conference room or the cute gift shop maybe it's our chef's array of cooking delights whichever way it's all about cactus creek a most respected hotel 0555-0397 The KSM Show My name is Yabwabin Asamwa, uh, Esquire. I'm a lawyer and uh, I'm also honorable, former MP for Adentan. I have known KSM for several years and the most memorable years for me was when uh, we used to go to the theater. He may have forgotten, Christ the King. <laughs> that is when the show was about the returnee diaspora <laughs> and I haven't stopped watching. It's even better now. It understands Ghana. It tells you about Ghana. Keep watching the KSM show. You will learn everything about your heritage and your future. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And we are back and I'm here with Shamima Muslim. And I told you in the beginning that she was quite in the media space. Uh, for those of you who remember, she did some work with the Metro TV. I think she was handling Good Morning Ghana, and then she did some work with the CTF um, Eyewitness News. Today she's here, you know, because she's still moved on, and we want to talk about how far she's moved, what she's doing now, plus plenty of other things. Shemima, welcome again. Thank you, Uncle KSM. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you are still doing this. I'm still here. You're with... like what, last man standing. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're still here. Hey. I think that you're such an inspiration oh. to many people, Thank both you. men and women, because 
you, you are an example of what it means to be resilient yes, and to yes. continue doing what you love for as long as you are able to, to do it. Because, you know, when I scan the media environment, I don't think there is any anybody in the media environment today who has done a regular show for as long as you have done. Mm. And it's still mm. in the media space mm. and mm. it's still relevant. There's none. Thank not, you. Not thank women, you. Thank you. not men. So <laughs> you, you deserve your flowers and your applauding. Oh, I thank mean, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Yeah. But there are some few gurus who are... Mm. Masa. Do you know Masa? No. Crazy Ghana. Pratt. Crazy Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about hosting your own oh, show consistently own? Okay. Okay. for okay. the okay. length of time that yeah, you have yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Since you know. 2002, I think. Yes. Mm. There's, there's nobody who is doing that. Thank consistently. you. Thank you. And you Thank know God. how difficult it is, isn't it? And Crazy Pratt has also been there for a long time, yes. but yes. more as a pundit. And then he does, you know, mm -hmm. a, a program mm -hmm. or two. But yours has been the longest running, as far as I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But don't switch it on me now. I ah, see you. you are you my sure guest. producer? Let me, let me interview <laughs> KSM. <laughs> it's really an honor to be here. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad Thank you're here. You I so always much. wanted to hear, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And, um... First of all, mm -hmm. we'll probably get back to broadcasting mm -hmm, space. Mm -hmm. where now you are, you, you, you've moved. You, you left broadcasting, then went to the Alliance for... For Women in Media Africa. Yeah, true. I remember Alma, that. Alma, true. And we did some real great work there. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's now become one of the most vibrant um, alliance of women and, or, or in media who are working towards increasing their own impact, visibility, mm. And we are collaborating with institutions like the School of Communication Studies. We were able to produce a first of its kind status of women in Ghana media report, mm. evidence for advocacy, so we can track progress over time. Fantastic. Yes, yeah. so that's been brilliant. That's one of my major achievements mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. I was convener. But I'm no longer convener, co Joe. That was about seven years ago. Yes, eh? yes, wow. yes, yes, wow. yes. That was about seven years ago. Wow. Mm. Well, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you And so you moved from there and now you are in the political Have space. Have I moved? <laughs> 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 you know, I was at a program, you know, I moderate a lot of programs. Yes. And the moderator goes like, now that, uh, so the, the, uh, the one of the panelists yeah. that I was moderating goes like, now that you are a politician. <laughs> I said, oh God, what does this even mean? <laughs> it's, it's like, you know. You, you, you opened a whole new chapter. You know. You are now a politician. Now that you are a politician, with all the connotations that comes with being a politician, you know. But yeah, yeah politics. Is, is what we breathe and eat. It mm. affects every aspect of our lives. It does. Nice things it that does, we shouldn't So what was the final the trigger or that, mm -hmm. that, that inciting yes. incident? Yes. You decided, okay, yes. now let me get into the game. Uh, um, okay, Sam, so it's been cooking for a while, mm. but as you have just um, referenced, sometimes there's something that triggers mm -hmm. a, a monumental you know, decision. As for the decision to come into politics, I've been thinking about it for a long while mm. because of the things I have seen in the advocacy space and the exhaustion that I've seen on the side of our senior you know, ad, um, activists who lament that we are not seeing the progress we ought to be seeing given the amount of work mm. that has gone into amplifying women's voices, stories, and images in mm -hmm. our society, mm -hmm. okay? And one thing that um, helped me in the decision was leading the campaign to increasing women's participation in local governance last year during the district assembly elections. We did so much work across the length and breadth of the country. Um, in Accra, Tamale, and uh, Kumasi, mm. we held training programs for the women aspirants. Mm. Um, we linked them with media. They got a lot of visibility. So you got results? You, you, we got results. So, really? so our primary targets, we, we, we chose 30 women. That's what our, our funding with the Canada uh, High Commission Small Grants Program, CFLI project. There were 30 um, women yes, you chose. We got 30, 10 women for each of these zones. And so that, that was 30 women directly who we went and had a, a, a capacity building training for mm -hmm. and supported them. Mm -hmm. And we had 30% success rate. We had 30% success okay. rate, yes. Of the 30 women, at least for the district level elections, 
15 of them won their elections, mm. some in the unit committees, mm. and then some who participated in other programs like um, a day seminar, but not the capacity building, mm -hmm. who won their elections. Mm. Which means that there is now an appetite on the side of women mm. to want to be in the fray. Mm. But the worrying situation was that after the elections, even though more women part, uh, voted, we had less, less than 5%, less than 5% of women who contest the election winning to become district um, assembly members. Assembly members, which is really like the, the lowest the of the level, lowest. The entry level, you need yeah. committee, basic level, which is not supposed to be any, you know, uh, big deal, but which is also the space that you find a lot of women who are the primary users of services within the assemblies and then primary um, providers of these services. Because if you go to the markets, the clinics, um, the hospitals, everything that you, you know, at the local level is like 80% women participating directly, either as the providers or the users. So you should think that at least at the assembly level, mm. we should have more should voices yes, okay. than it okay. is, 5%. Less than 5%, actually, less than the last, you know, elections of the local government. So I'm like, no, there's a problem. If we keep saying that more women should participate, we are seeing increasing numbers, but it seems like there are still more barriers. The only way we can bridge the gap is to bridge the gap. We can either bridge the gap if more women are contesting elections and winning those elections. Mm -hmm. We can um, bridge the gap if um, leaders, political leaders, are appointing more women into positions through affirmative action, you know, uh, policies and programs, which is why I am excited about the passage of the affirmative action, you know, uh, bill. The president is yet to accent to it anyway, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So the question is, who are the women you are telling to put themselves up for the elections? Mm -hmm. The numbers are not increasing. Mm -hmm. We can't mm -hmm. all be sitting why on the sidelines. Women deliberately shy away from that because of the all the hustles that go with it, the bashing, the whatever you can think of why okay, yes, specifically sir. had i not the support of my husband my parents my community in the first few weeks after coming out in support of the ndc i probably would have run back really no that the, we, 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 we run a very our, our society is very sexist mm. and is very vindictive mm. and it's even worse towards women the vitriol women who dare to have an opinion, who dare to speak out, who dare to criticize, they receive excessive, disproportionate mm. levels of vitriol, name calling, labeling, really? bullying, yes, on social media. And there are studies that show it, that there are this, women are bullied online more than their male counterparts, especially women who dare to have an opinion, you know. So we, we can't, and I say that we should not, and we must not. Any patriot cannot dare to cede the public square to these fringe elements mm. who are bent like, on crowding. I like how you call fringe yes, elements. Yes, they are that's fringe they elements. Are. They are. They, they are bent on crowding out discerning voices and, you know, um, expert voices. So you, you, you meet a lot of women who know who mm. are very knowledgeable mm. and i know that in your career you have come across so many yes they would dare to just... they will not offer an opinion on any matter yeah even because though their the expertise yes. yeah yeah you know so, so, mm -hmm. what was it that 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 made you decide regardless i'm going in and once you went in yes and got all that backlash mm. what was it that kept you to stay <laughs> and i'm staying whether they like it or not <laughs> it was the picketing of the um, pensioners. Okay. In fact, that episode, you know, has scarred my 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 conscience. Really? Yes. It what was. What exactly it, did it do to When you? I I felt broken, I felt broken because here we are encouraging um, the youth to be patriotic, uh, talking every day, uh, trying to motivate all of us to believe in you know, our country, and to not lose hope. Mm -hmm. Because there seems to be despondency everywhere mm -hmm. you're going. Mm -hmm. Every Everyone you speak to seems to have given up on this country. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, it was like the moment where I just 
just saw graphically all the voices that kept telling me that no, Ghana is a lost case. You know, that, that was the graphic representation for me that mm, we are almost at a lost case because if somebody can work all their life for this country, mm -hmm. all their life, mm -hmm. and transitioned from an era where we used to keep money under our pillows because we had said that trust in the financial sector. Yes, yes. We have wanted to move more people into the, the formalized ba yeah. banking you know, sector as it should for any advanced society. Monies must be in banks because without savings, without investment, no country would pull themselves out of you know, yeah. poverty. People yeah. need to save for banks to be able to offer low interest rates mm -hmm. and offer credit for businesses mm -hmm. to be able to grow, mm -hmm. to be able to upscale, the basis, to be the able savings. to, that is the basis yeah. of every you know, ad, a society that advanced, a savings culture and an investment culture because if you just put your money in your you know savings account or your current account the interest is very minimal you're not going to build capital enough over time to be able to invest in anything and these people accepted and believed and actually thought for a long time that you know we're told you know these financial people will tell you that at least government bonds are the, are safest. the safest you can't, that go what, wrong. you can't go wrong. Yeah. Whatever it is, government is always a going concern, isn't it? And governments will always, you know, um, pay. So they go invest their life savings mm. in government bonds, mm. in treasury bills. And then they just wake up one day you without any notice, without any sensitivity. We give them a head cut that they didn't ask for. And they begged, they pleaded, and you had to allow for them to come and sit hours under the sun, mm. hours in the rain, so crying. So that you, eh? it, is, it was like watching it, this yes, and you said, it no, scarred me. something is wrong. Something is deeply wrong. Something, something is deeply wrong. And you know, when I heard um, a former vice chancellor of a public university on air bemoan bitterly and tell the media that he would never again advise his son or any relative of his to trust the financial sector. Mm. I knew that, you know, this government under the leadership of Nanado and Baumia has just sent us decades back mm. in terms of building trust again in our financial sector. And the former Chief Justice, who knows more than yeah. most of us, yeah. who has seen more than most yeah. of us. That was Who a very, understands very powerful more than thing to most see her of us in the picketing? Yes, in the picketing. Who said that she's now been ungagged because she's no longer the chief justice? Somebody you can see that she truly is a very principled person, even though she may have had all these concerns whilst in office, she never aired them out mm -hmm. because she owed fidelity to the office that she, you know, she headed. But immediately she left that position, she showed as it should to many citizens mm -hmm. and these moral mm -hmm. voices who have gone quiet, that a society will never be built when those who know better refuse to do better and refuse to speak out consistently. I, I like what you just said. Yes. When those who know better yes. refuse to speak. They refuse. Yeah. They refuse. For whatever their motivations are, they refuse. And, and that's the sad reality of, of our society. Mm -hmm. It seems to be very discriminatory mm -hmm. uh, and and um uh, it seems that some people are the favorites of some people mm -hmm. but you know so let's move on yes. you went through that era we all went through that <laughs> yes. you got mightily scared and then yes. decided what this and, one and day decided I must do what? That, no i'm not <laughs> going to do any i i, I have a platform mm. i believe that i i have held myself out over the years um, with with some level of integrity I did my work. At the time that I was in the media, the NDC was in power. The NDC has al I've always had a soft spot for the NDC because I was born in an NDC tradition. Mm. And the values and the philosophy sits right with, with my reality, mm. with, with my background, you know, that create prosperity for the majority of people. And inequalities in a society cannot be bridged by pushing unbridled capitalism and greed, where a few would, you know, come in and take our collective resources and believe themselves entitled to those collective resources. 
So that as a philosophy has always been my, you know, my guide. Mm. And I, I, I related a lot to the philosophy of the NDC. But when I was in the media, I held them to strict accountability. Mm, mm, mm. You know, there are people who see me today, hey, we never knew you, you had any sympathies for us. Hey, the way you showed us Shege. Mm -hmm, I said, mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. we must have a society mm -hmm. where irrespective of Do you of recollect what specific our... moments where, where you took them on because you thought, principally, this is wrong, and even if I'm a sympathizer, you have to hear my voice on this? There were so many, uh, there were a lot of such instances yeah. because my philosophy is that a party in government will always have more questions mm -hmm. to answer than mm -hmm. an opposition party. Definitely. You know, Definitely. so in the first year of any administration, it's still, it's, it's still a judgment over the outgone yes. administration. Yes. So on, on th there were a lot of questions to the NPP in, in that, you know, 2009 when I started. They were because you still have to answer. Yes. But by the second year, when they come onto my show, I said, no, right now we should be talking about your own actions. Right now, we cannot continue saying that MPP did this because you obviously the they now. have been voted yeah. out because they failed. Thank you. Do you see it? And, and those same principles must apply, and they apply today. Today, MPP cannot plead, you know, innocence over the things that brought them to power. You know, so I had major quarrels. I mean, there were a few standoffs with um, NDC, some NDC people on my show. The most popular one, which I, it was my standoff with Kobe Achapong, I, or, you know, in the studios of Metro Television. But we are friends today. I met him recently <laughs> and we, even, we took a photo. But that year was, was quite germane and seminal for me because in the beginning of the year, I had this standoff with um, Kobe. Towards the end of the year, I had similar with Eslo Owusu. You know, I remember. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and and it, it was it was a major quarrel. Sadly, as it was, because I don't always want to find myself in those kinds. But the provocation was was a bit much that required a response. And and the bottom line then, when you are trying to seek account accountability, is always that we know your paymasters. Yes. And I said, well, no I is. must be be rich. <laughs> so I mean, then I knew I was doing something right. Right. I was doing something so right. You, if all <laughs> these two political parties believe that I have paid masters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, if they had any evidence, they wouldn't have waited at all to show those evidence. Yes, yes, so there were those um, instances. And um, in, my, in my media career, another chapter that was also a bit of a, um, that create, opened my eyes to, you know, <laughs> I always say that I have experienced NPP in opposition because mm -hmm. in that time they were in opposition mm -hmm. <clears throat> and i've experienced ndc in power and i've experienced mpp in power today and, and ex in ndc opposition. in opposition and from a very objective point of view i have come to the conclusion that from my experience and my observation of their interaction with other people i've spoken to truly the ndc john dramani mahama has been more tolerant and is more tolerant than uh, the NPP under the leadership of Nane Kufado mm, and Baumia. Mm, mm. I recall, you know, this um, all die be die comment was played for the first time on my show on Eyewitness News. And the, the backlash afterwards, even though I am not the one, because there was a, a, a journalist with the team who sent us the voice. I remember very clearly because that day I had almost, we were almost done Eyewitness News when the producer rushed into the studio to say, as I'm signing out, I should sign out by saying that, meanwhile, um, Nane Kufado has been speaking to some party faithfuls in the Eastern region, mm -hmm. you know. So I don't know if it was supposed to be a closed event, but our original correspondent was at that meeting and then sent that voice, you know, to the, the studios, the, studio. um, the newsroom. So they cut that voice where he said, you know, and this year is all die be die. And you would know the fury that came afterwards, yeah, you know. Lot. But I say that as a journalist, you take the, the praise, but you also take the, the negative effect. Because I think that particular story generated very negative sentiments against me mm, as a person mm, in the camp of, mm, of, of the new patriotic mm. party. And, you know, comments you would receive, text messages you receive made me, convince me that, no, they were actually more intolerant to, to criticisms and to people. And this story I haven't said any, shared anywhere. 
you know, um, in the 2008 elections, the IEA presidential and vice presidential debates, um, a number of individuals were nominated at the inter-party committee with the, uh, with, with the electoral, with the um, IEA. And apparently, Professor Nana Jane had the highest number of votes, followed by Kojo, then me, then um, Kweku Sechu Adu. So we're the top four who were to, to, to question to the candidates. participate in yeah. both the presidential and um, vice presidential debate. But I, eventually, it was just the three of us. So it was uh, Professor Nana Jane, Kojo, and myself who became the, active, um, the, the moderators for the debate. And then I hear, whilst we are planning, I get some calls that I have been, the MPP camp has uh, raised objection to, to my participation in the presidential mm. debate mm. because they had seen me at a strategic meeting of the NDC at NDPC. <laughs> PV or Bing was the head. And that's when I knew that our, our, our politics can be vile and that this book that I ever read, Bogus in Four Months, is real. And you think that it's contrived until you, are be you become mm. the, at the receiving end of it. And so luckily, uh, um, somebody from within the camp made me know that these were the sentiments within the camp, that they saw me as an NDC. So they wanted, you out they wanted the, me out. Yeah. So what, they, maybe the belief was that I was coming to go and give any question. At that time, this was the time that the NDC would not even touch me by a long pole. Because they themselves were upset about mm. the accountability. So I sat back and I said, you know, these things are real, real um, deep, deep uh, problems in our society. And I showed the letter I received to attend a seminar from a visiting Canadian professor who had come from Canada to speak to the NDC, NDPC about um, the, the, the setting up Office of Accountability mm -hmm. at the highest level, like the presidency, as a way of safeguarding the nation and then combating corruption. Every director of the NDPC was at that meeting. PV or being chaired that meeting. There were media people in that meeting. I said, this is the only meeting I have ever gone mm. at NDPC. And it had nothing to, to do, do with, with NDC. But you know what? When they went to Tamale, somehow I was not invited to join Tamale, to join the trip. So that is what proved to me that indeed the sentiments were real. Mm. They never took mm. me along to Tamale. Mm. This is truth. IEA is aware of it. And did so they what, explain what why? No, they will not explain why. They just did not explain anything to me. But I had heard the reason why I was not on that team. Even as an observer, what if touch wood, anything had happened to Kojo? So you would know from evidence that it was Kojo Opong and Koma and Professor Nana Jin who did the two presidential debates, one in Accra and one here, and I was put on the vice presidential debate. Wow. Yes, this is the first time I'm narrating this wow. story to you. You know, wow. and, and that was on, on a baseless, baseless, baseless accusation. When MPP won, who was the first minister of information? Was it not my colleague, Kojo Ponkroma? So should we say that, okay, you were okay with yeah. Kojo because he was yeah. on your side? On the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see? Something that's in jail. The, it doesn't jail. Something that's so, in jail. So yeah. that, that, that's when I really, and I said, no, 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 no. Um, this group of people are a bit more intolerant. Mm, mm, quite intolerant. Mm, mm. What I, what, what I, what I drew my attention to mm. Muhammad's tolerance level yes. was after he had been bashed so much by Reverend Marty mm -hmm. and he more he such bashing and mm -hmm. I remember I don't know where they went mm -hmm. but they met somewhere and how Muhammad went to hug him and they were talking and laughing Is yes. that Muhammad with Marty? Yes. So I just realized well he's just a very tolerant person. He is. And the, 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 what do they call it? The, 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 the cocks have come home to roost. Is that the phrase they use? The, the chickens. <laughs> the chickens. <have. laughs> the chickens, because yeah. everybody is now confessing. Yeah. People are confessing, uh, you know, about how, how they, they <laughs> dealt with him unjustly. And mm. Manasseh himself has come to confess, confess that he, and that, you know, yeah. is, this, this government, he's been depressed. He was virtually hounded out of this country. Yeah. And he was, he was not allowed an interview 
with, with the president, even though John Mahama, who was burying his mother, had to deal with, with the, the negative, issue, yes, of, yes. And yet he bought the book, he granted him an interview to, to have a chance to speak. That, that is the nature of it. And Manasseh tells us that, well, uh, that uh, he was told by uh, an insider that people are different. In, indeed, people are different. And, and, and that's one of the reasons I think that John Mahama deserves to come back. Into, he's a good human being, mm. a very good human being. Actually. So th th that was the, well, among many, among things, many things, what drove you to, yes. it's time to actually get involved? Yes, in that yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, because if not you, who? I always say that yeah. if not you, who? Especially if you have something to contribute, mm. right? Like I've said, I, I I have executed my public life with a level of integrity mm -hmm. and fidelity to Ghana, and I consider myself a true patriot. Mm. And this election, I tell people that we should rise up to patriotism and mm. being true patriots. Mm. And it it will not matter what political party you belong, even if you're a member of the NPP, if you're a member of the NDC. CPP, whatever political situation, this is a very unprecedented time that patriotism yeah. and being patriots should matter more than what political ideology we belong. Because objectively, if you do a comparative analysis on the basis of competency in management of the economy, on the basis of conduct in, in office and even in opposition, and on the basis of character of the administration, in comparison to what we had. Nobody will sit here and say that um, there was a perfect situation. No, there were challenges. And when there were those challenges, the, those challenges were acknowledged. When people were found to have done wrong under His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, they were made to face the rigors of, of the law. And some of them went to prison as a result. But in the eight years of Nana Baumia administration, what we have seen is a mass, uh, as let me borrow somebody's word, a uh, clearing of all individuals, you know, seen in actions that are obvious um, conflict of interest situations, wrong situations. I mean, I always shut up, but I mean, it's painful to re reference it. Mm -hmm. But, but mm -hmm. the character of, of this administration is what we witnessed with the Cecilia Dapa situation. A, a, an administration that is completely torn deaf from the head to the bottom. Mm -hmm. a, an administration that is completely torn deaf. And on that note, let's take a commercial break because Shamima is on fire, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll break small when we come back. Ball of Shamima Muslim. We'll be right back. The KSM Show. Is it the luxurious rooms? Or the serene green surroundings? Is it the tempting swimming pool? Or the classy conference room? or the cute gift shop. Maybe it's our chef's array of cooking delights. Whichever way, it's all about Cactus Creek. A most respected hotel. 055 Zero three nine five zero zero seven. The KSM Show. Keep watching your most authoritative KSM show, the best show. We all love it. And I would like all of you to keep watching KSM. He is a patriot who loves our country and who has done this for many years. And we cannot miss the opportunity.
to support him, to express our solidarity, and to wish him the very best. So keep watching the KSM show. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back with Shabi, my Muslim. And before the break, you, you used a little word out there that I want to pick on it to, to enter into this face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you, you said tone deaf. Yes, I said this government has been extremely tone deaf. And for me, the character of that, that this administration was um, the Cecilia Dapa episode where a minister of state is found holding very colossal sums of foreign currency um, in her home over a million dollars and more and the response to from the leader of mm -hmm. government the president of the republic was to write a letter almost absolving her before any investigative you know body could you know um in, 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 investigates right, yeah. and investigates and, and deem her innocent. Whether or not that money was ill-gotten money, the optics of a minister of state keeping such amounts of money in her home was at complete variance to the messages we were receiving from the same government. At a time, the city was depreciating eh, so fast that they themselves had given up with regards to how they can control the further depreciation. Members of their government were out, accusing the opposition party of generating unnecessary fear mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the public. Yeah. Okay, Sam, just, just observe the dissonance. And their, their, their request to Ghanaians was that they should trust the financial system and they should not rush to go and remove their dollars from their accounts. They shouldn't panic. And you were accusing the NDC of being the ones generating panic. At a time as a market woman, you just ordered goods from abroad at a dollar to about five, uh, what do you call it? A dollar to about 10 cities when it went high. And then within a week, it goes to about 14 cities. And you are telling them that they should not rush to go and take. Mm. And then we found a boom that your minister of state was holding millions of dollars. Your own minister of state did not have trust in your financial mm. sector. Your own minister of state did not trust the banking sector to keep her money in the bank. Is that not where you say we should all keep our money? And you think it's okay to write, dear Cecilia, you trust that she will be absorbed. What messages are you, what conflicting messages are you giving to the people of Ghana? Mm. That's mm. when I realized that this administration is, is completely tone deaf. They have complete disregard to the intelligence of the Ghanaian. And they will do what they please, how they please, when they please. Irrespective of who talks, who criticizes, they just don't give mm. a damn. Mm. Mm -hmm. deeply intransigent mm -hmm. and that intransigence again the character of the administration is what led us to the IMF mm -hmm. because they parried all well-meaning voices they parried civil society voices who had observed tra the tra trajectory of borrowing the excessive unsustainable borrowing at a point our debt to GDP ratio in 2022 had hit 104 percent which was completely unsustainable and in the throes of all that we witnessed profligate expenses mm -hmm. on the side of government is it not tone deafness insensitivity to the general plight in the midst of all that when everybody the opposition people were drawing your attention civil society were drawing your attention to the fact that the way we are going our, certain, our end was very certain. We will end up with the IMF. A week or so to the announcement of the IMF program, the finance minister then, Ken Oforata, was still in parliament, yeah. telling us that we're a very, very proud, proud nation. <laughs> proud nation. <laughs> and we'll no never more. go to IMF. What yeah. happened? And when we went back to the IMF, and 88 members of your own administration said that, no, you who did not believe that we were in a position to go to the IMF. 
should not be the one to lead the IMF negotiations because it will be counterproductive. They called for the resignation of the finance minister. Even that call was parried because it seems that when you are in the books, good books of the president, you will do no wrong and he will see no wrong that you do. Mm. That is the dissonance levels we have witnessed. Mm. Eventually, after whatever he did, he was finally let go. And he was not let go. He, he was, was given <laughs> 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 And then yeah, I said that our president here, yeah, he's assignment. a real friend or <laughs> he's a, a real ride or die. Well. <laughs> he's a real ride or die. Mm. But at the expense of the Ghanaian. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. At the expense so, of the so, Ghanaian. So getting, if I would say, actively to be a part of the politics now, uh, what do you hope you can contribute? What, what kind of change can you make? I think that I will not sit here and, and say that <clears throat> our politics, whether it's NDC politics or CPP politics, is without problems. I think the democracy as we practice is inherently flawed. Mm. That's my personal philosophy. Mm. I do not think we must run a country, even though that is the vehicle we have chosen, a multi-party democracy, mm -hmm. a winner-takes-all democracy. Yeah. That flies at the essence of who we are or pride ourselves to be as a people. Mm. Whether you're looking at our traditions and customs, whether you're looking at our faith and beliefs and religion, at the basis of all of our faiths and traditions and customs is fellow feeling. It's fellow feeling. Fellow feeling. They said, love your neighbor as yourself. Is that not what the Christians tell us? And so if you loved your neighbor as yourself, you wouldn't want to be the person who destroys your neighbor's livelihood just so you can have access. Because there's so much in our society to go around for every one of us. Would you, I'm hearing you, and would you at this point lay any blame to the constitution that was set up to give so much powers that created this whole winner takes all? Yes. It's very constitutional. I think that I am aligned to a lot of people who think that we must review our constitution and reduce the powers we give to the executive presidency. Yeah. He's almost like a god. He is and a god. when you yeah. come, when you give somebody who, who is not measured, you know, uh, such excessive powers, we would see more distraction than we will see than apply, at the upliftment of our society. So we must look at the, the flaws within our democracy. And we must begin conversations about how we make our vehicles, the political parties, more responsive to the people. Mm. I read a text, Anka KSM, um, on Holy Trinity. It was one of my uh, development communication classes. The text was about the triad World Bank, IMF, World Trade Organization, and the hegemony they continue to perpetuate. And I have, using that same model, when you come into our nation and our politics, it is the politics, the business, and the people. And I say that it doesn't have to be an unholy alliance mm -hmm. between the politics and the business at the expense of the people. people. Even as we recognize that there can't be politics without business, and certainly there can't be um, business without politics. But there will not be politics and there will, be not, uh, there will not be business without the people. Mm. Even our pursuit of growth and advancement, we are motivated solely by rent-seeking behavior, by greed to collaborate with business at the expense of the masses. Someday these masses, they would rise up. Mm -hmm as history has always shown us, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. we have seen in other nations. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. If our motivations were not greed, the little that we have should be enough. And the most or the majority should go into solving the real problems of the citizens. And sometimes the citizens are not asking for too much. That grandmother of mine who is living in a mad hut, a mad hut in Gorupi, she's not asking for a mansion. She's asking for simple farm implements. Her life is not too much for mm -hmm. her to demand mm -hmm. so much. Just the basics. Just the basics. Let me have access to drinking water. Let me have access to farmlands. Let me have access to implements, fertilizer, to be able to grow the food I eat. Let me be able to have access to a chips compound, to seek health care or a school so that my children mm. can also attend what, school. What in your view is the cause of this? Somehow, the very basics that people are asking for completely missed, completely ignored. What do you think? I think that it is poor governance and it is greed and it is the lack of leaders with conscience. Because as I've heard, leadership is cause and everything else is effect. We can't sit on a country that has the, the resources that we have, but historically we have not used or dispensed those resources mm. to uplifting the condition of the masses. The wastage in the system, the corruption in the system, the unholy alliances between politics and business that take so much away. The agreements we have entered into selfishly that seeks to enrich us and our clan and our family to the expense of, you know, at the expense of the, of the citizens is what is to be blamed for it. And yes, people say that a people will get the leaders they deserve. Mm -hmm. Our educational outcomes have improved significantly from the time of independence. So if as citizens, we are generally educated, we are generally aware. And when, look, the individuals, so the citizens must also bear part of the blame. Mm -hmm. Attempts to be the voice of the voiceless. Mm -hmm. And very soon, it's the same citizens who will gang up mm. against uh, you. Not to call you. Like they've done to yeah. um, Oliver. Yeah, <laughs> this, I remember um, um, somebody asked me mm. at one time, I had this very, very vibrant yes. show on radio. Yes. And I think I, I toned off for quite a bit of time. So somebody saw me say, I can't say, why? You seem quiet. Yes. Then I gave him an example. Yes. And I said, imagine I'm crossing a river on a bridge. Mm -hmm. I look down and I see plenty of people mm -hmm. drowning mm -hmm. in the water, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm like panicking mm -hmm. and I go for a rope, mm -hmm. throw them a lifeline mm -hmm. to climb back up. Yes. And when I throw the rope, they are in the water mm -hmm. and they do this to me. Take <laughs> <laughs> it with a middle finger. Good <laughs> hell. I say, eh, yes. you know, so this it, is... It's problematic. Yes. The, the, the masses do not support the lone voices of accountability. They don't. Yes, and sometimes they question their mm -hmm. motives. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that it is not either or. Everybody, we are all here, as Maslow tells us, we are all seeking self-actualization. Mm. It is, even in, 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 in the worship of God, mm -hmm. it is not an unselfish mm -hmm. uh, exploit. We do things to make God happy that he will bless us. Mm. It's not completely unselfish. <laughs> we go and we do adore. We give out because we know that if we do this, God will be happy for us. <laughs> and is that not the case? Is... So there's nothing wrong in seeking self-actualization, yeah, in aspiring definitely. to the mm -hmm. good things of life. Mm -hmm. But there's a right way to do things, and then there's a wrong mm. way to do things. Mm. And then there is the unsustainable way of doing things. Okay. So okay. if you want to build and build longer walls, by all means, go ahead and build your mansions and build longer walls. You're not going to stay in that home forever. You will step out. And when the streets are unsafe, your long walls will it not save you. you. Yeah. So it's a matter of survival for everybody who... Who can? Let us talk about reviving the moral conscience of our society. 
because we can we can eat and work at the same time. Mm. We are not saying that let people be lazy and expect handouts. But when leaders put a nation to work, that nation can generate its prosperity and everybody can mm. get a little bit from the national cake. The cake yeah. Yeah. Let me pick your brains a little mm. bit. Um, we are within 90 days of a very major election. Three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three, week, th three months. Yes. Yeah. Less now even. Less mm. now, actually. Mm. But, but here's the thing, you know, I was telling to when I said, what, however you look at it, it's a historic election coming. It is. You know, if the MPP retains power and comes back, that's uh, breaking the eight. The eight. Historic. It's a social historic. If <laughs> Mahama actually wins also after historic. being president and we are trying Mahama to... Mahama chapter two. That's chapter two. That's very historic. Yes, indeed. If Alan comes... It's historic. Alan will Cheddar. come do. Cheddar will come also. <laughs> Cheddar, comes, Cheddar, comes. Cheddar is not coming anywhere close to the presidency. Okay. Not anytime soon. Either way, mm -hmm. whatever happens is going to be historic. History, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is your take on Okay, on, so I'm going to say this too. I uh -huh. agree yeah. that either, either outcomes are historic. But you know, we even though... We, we are still a deeply spiritual nation and that there, there, are, there are some moves that those who have eyes, those who see will, will, will tell you. And they all say that, yes, they are, it's very a uh, historic period. But I also know that the presidency and ascending to the presidency is not a straight path. Mm -hmm. Everybody who has sought the presidency, especially after, um, you know, uh, this Fourth Republic since 1992, mm. you know, apart from PNDC that transitioned and did eight years. And in that eight years, Kufour tried it for how many times mm -hmm. before he mm -hmm. finally won it? Mills tried it for how many times before he finally won yeah. it? Nene Kufado tried it for how many times before he finally won it? To, uh, to arise and rise to that epoch as a president requires a certain, a certain growth process. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that perhaps, you know, John Mahama ascended to the presidency maybe easier because he was a vice and unfortunately um, we lost we a lost, president. Yeah. So he completed the term of the president and many people would say that you know we used less than six months to do an, a campaign and at that time it was also the first term of of mills so there was a lot of sympathy that you know gave him that presidency mm -hmm. so he won that election in the second term did he win the election the ndc had done eight years as a party he didn't win the election for a number of reasons and god said go sit home let me uh, throw some lessons to the people of Ghana. Baumia is a vice president who has done eight years with his president. Does Baumia think that it should be easy for him to just become the president of Ghana just like that for a 12-year continuous mandate, especially when the performance is not stellar in comparison to any other government that we have seen before? Does Baumia think it should be so easy to hand over the president to him on such a silver platter after just one trial in terms of seeking even the mandate of the new patriotic party? Nane Ekufado went for MPP primaries three good times. So you can say that he was cooked three good times before he rose to the occasion and the office of the presidency. I think that the presidency is not something that somebody should just transition to easily like that. And I'm not sure Baumia would... I, I, I spoke with his mm -hmm. uh, spokesperson mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. That must have been my last case. Mm -hmm. He said the, he's working at it. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. I, I said, well, people have yes. said that the position was cooked and that was a choice. He said, no, 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 he's working. Mm -hmm. so Mahama has you... worked at it for how many times <laughs> now? You know... After he finished his, four, his, his own four-year term, his, Nana, Nanado says that he's not going to hand over 
to somebody that he has beaten twice. But people who beat you so many times handed over power <laughs> to you. So how do you think that it's in your hands? So I'm just trying to draw our attention to the fact that Bahama has gone at it two times. This is his third time. I am not a spiritual ICA. Baumia should also do the need for. He, he has age by his side. He shouldn't go to the northern regions and tell our chiefs that if he wins, he can do eight years. How do you know that? We don't own our lives. He wants the vote. You know. And you I don't, think you they, don't they know that. by now mm. that mm. whatever people will hear to vote for mm. you, tell them tell that. Tell them. Yeah. Well, so, so that, 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 that is a non-starter. Because if you are truly interested in the northern region, because it's, it's, I say it's a, contest, it's a contest between Sons of Savannah, right? Whatever it is, as he himself has said, the presidency is coming to the north. Mm -hmm. So it's either John or Baumia. And now you tell the chiefs that uh, if you vote for me, I can do eight years. You are being very, um, you, you, you're being very um, assumptuous that even your party will give you mm. Uh, mm. A, a renewed mm. mandate when mm. you haven't even proven to them that whatever mm. mandate they've given you will be justified. It's very presumptuous to make that statement. And if you were truly interested in the North, John is your big brother. You know, he never takes an opportunity to insult you or to throw, you know, pork, uh, what do they say, pot shots at, at you. He never does. You do that constantly everywhere you go. And if John had done eight years, and you also come and do your eight years, is it not 16 years? for the north that you love is will 16 years not have been better than <laughs> the the 12 years because <laughs> mama has done four years and you want to come and do eight years a bed in hand huh? so a bed in hand mama is closer to the presidency let him come and do four years and go we would have had two sons then you also come and try your hands again in the in, in the in the next round in the next round if you do eight years alhamdulillah very well and good for the people of the northern region to see that two of their sons have all risen. But you don't make those kinds of, because the math will not add up, you know. Mm. So I'm saying that John, whatever lessons God wanted to teach him, he has learned them. And whatever lessons God wanted to teach Ghanaians, we have learned it. And as Manasseh says, we now have a president Ghana never had. Because <laughs> had, had uh, President Kufado not become a president, had we not seen the character, the conduct, and even the so-called management of the economy, the indicators on which they campaigned, you know, to come into power, the basis of competence, you know, all these indicators have fallen flat in their administration and they still don't even want to cede any responsibility for their misgovernance, mm -hmm. their mismanagement, the corruption in untold levels that we have seen, you know, the, the general discrimination, the collapse of businesses. I heard Archbishop Duncan Williams one say that um, we shouldn't, you know, encourage a situation where ev every eight years we build new businesses and destroy mm. the businesses mm. of our opponents. Mm. It's not sustainable. Mm. And I've said that PNDC, NDC was in government for a very long time. If we were raping this country at the, the, the rate at which it has been raped in the last eight years, nothing would have been left for anybody to come and, and find. You see, politics is a tool for rich distribution. And no, nobody would say that when your party wins, don't grow your party people. But we've been in this country. I mean, people have married, uh, intermarried, you know. We are a people who hold each other's hands. That is the history of our politics, even though it is largely winners take all. Mm -hmm. But that face, that character has completely changed. Mm. Completely. Mm. When you hear the businessmen from both sides, when you hear, you know, workers from both sides, they themselves tell you stories of the relationships they've had with each other over the years and how people have been supportive, you know, with each other. Because, look, at the very basic case, if you have two children, you wouldn't want one to go hungry mm -hmm. and you feed one fat. It, it goes against the grain of, you know, mother nature. Mm -hmm. If you have two children, you want all of them to have a fairly balanced opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think that is why intrinsically Ghanaians have made it an eight year cycle. Mm -hmm. That's you know? all. Yes, that's all. <laughs> <laughs>
it's not because you're saying that, oh, so, yeah. because at the end of the eight years, whatever you so have come to do, you will do. And, so. and, mm. and that's the eight year cycle mm. that was also, um, the, 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 that also affected mm. your mama's, mm. you know, okay. second. Speaking uh, of the eight year tenor, cycle, mm. we, have, we are hearing pronouncements. Mm. Uh, uh, me says we have one million ways of winning. So mm. says we will never concede even at the altar of peace. All these pronouncements that coming as close seat. as mm -hmm. we are to the election. How does that make you feel? What, 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 what do you expect? You know, I'm so saddened. I'm saddened, but I'm not because, you see, objectively, and Ghanaians need to open their eyes to these things. The recent Afrobarometer report, you know, came up with uh, uh, findings about the state of democracy in Ghana. And 87% of Ghanaians say that Ghana is heading in the wrong direction mm -hmm. under the current mm -hmm. government. 87% of your citizens. Many are even thinking of military option as an option compared to the numbers that thought so 10 years ago. The same Afrobarometer report has told us that this government has shown increasing heavy handedness that they have stifled the media and they have eroded accountability institutions. These are not my words. These are words of <laughs> a research finding yeah. from a group of people who have no interest in our local politics, mm -hmm. but they are just monitoring democracy. So when we have members of government at a time where trust in our institutions is an all time yeah. low, yeah. the electoral commission and all the shenanigans we are pointing out, missing BVDs and BVRs in custody of the Electoral Commission, less than three months to a, a, yeah. a historic election where the stakes are so high this way. And then we have members of government, including a president, who would say that I will not hand over power to this, who somebody I've beaten twice. Then somebody say you can go and bend the seat, a minister of state. And then somebody says that we'll win the elections by strategy. What are you telling us? I think that the signs are arrived and all Ghanaians must make sure we come out in our numbers and vote resoundingly so that the margins cannot be disputed and cannot be stolen. Because this year, more than ever, is a seminal moment. And we must make a very clear statement to those that are bent on pushing this country down a slippery slope that we will not allow them. That this country is all many of us have. That's all we have. This is all we have for our children. I tell my friends, I mean, I gave birth to all my children here. Mm -hmm. I'm raising them here. Mm -hmm. I never went abroad to have, I don't have a dual passport, mm -hmm. nowhere. Your children so are, not says, are not citizens of any country, country outside country. Ghana, where most I don't of these have people any, have any, <laughs> any property anywhere to run to. Yeah. So, and this is the story of many and millions of Ghanaians. And so, let us not sit back because of some very trivial, um, trivial motivations, you know, ethnic considerations. Let's not sit back and la allow this country to to be destroyed. So I think vigilance is what we should all call for. And the moral voices, the peace industry, the peace council that is asking us to sign peace pacts that do not mean anything, must be more interested in calling out these divisive elements in our society. These statements that portend trouble, they should call them out so that people will be measured in their speak. Because I've noticed that the NDs, N N NPP, when they provoke you, they go back and play victim and expect you to put your hands in between your ties and keep quiet. This is their modus operandi. When they provoke you and you respond, then they now le uh, leverage your response to try to call you as the one who is rather fear-mongering. Yeah. If you don't do fear-mongering things, people will not fear monger. If you don't do some things that are clear as to your intent, nobody will rise and call for greater vigilance. Where are the BVDs? Where are they? Why are there such mistakes in our voter register? 
Why are we transferring people who did not know that they had been transferred from their polling station? So on election day, if I go to my polling center and my name is not there, okay. when I had registered in that, what should happen? And you don't even know where you have been transferred to. And the security to. agencies yeah. must be on the side of the people and the citizens and this country. Because without a country, you cannot be a security agency leader. If the country goes up in flames, well, it's is. going to combust all of us equally. And we will not want that to happen. We don't want to happen. We want to come into power. Do we want to come to a, 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 into power for a country that is up in flames? No. So it cannot be that NDC wants to foment trouble. In fact, NDC wants to avoid trouble. And those who are truly interested in holding on to power by all means possible, because they have much to lose, they have a lot more to hide. So it is in their interest that they do anything and everything within their power. They are in power to hold on to power. And it is up to us, the people, to say no more to and say throw no them more. out. And Shamima. Yes, and send the elephant back into the bush <laughs> and come under the safety of the umbrella. <laughs> it's a katamansu. Feel safe under our umbrella. Welcome everybody under this umbrella of growth, of job, of prosperity, of reset. And on that note, show some love, show some love, show some love. <laughs> Shalima, thank you so much. I, I mean, thank you for, more. For, for, for being a part of this show yes. and addressing some specific things which Ghanaians yes. need to know yes. and hear. Thank you. And ultimately, mm -hmm. the peace and the love for this country, mm -hmm. we will do all we can yes. to protect. We must protect it. So thank you. I thank and you And not too. only am I thanking you, I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you to sign off the show for me. So How folks. <laughs> <laughs> we are out of yeah. <laughs> SM Show.